Hey guys, Bedialytics is a great website that shows a ton of data in BDO. It's an essential tool in any life skillers toolkit that wants to understand the silver per hour and what they get when doing crafts. This video will really go over how to set up and use Bedialytics in terms of cooking, alchemy and processing and a little bit of gathering. The examples we'll use will be cooking, but alchemy and processing uses the same methods that we'll talk about. So instead of making Valencia meals, for example, you can just put in elixirs or planks. Finally, I'll go over some example crafts to help you become more comfortable with using Bedialytics. The example portion is going to be the most informative and hands-on approach, so if you are a visual learner, you can skip to that part. We'll have the timestamp on YouTube, but just be sure to change your settings later on. The first step we gotta take is setting up the settings in Bedialytics. This includes inputting mastery, weight, tax, and other things to help personalize your silver per hour. Let's look at the general settings first. The first one is the tax benefit you get from Family Fame. This can be found in your Informations tab in-game. If you have less than 1000 Family Fame, choose the 0 option. If you have 1000 to 3999, choose the .005 option. And if you have 4,000 to 6,999, choose the 0.01 option. If you have more than 7,000 family fame, choose the 0.015 option. This is just to correct for the tax benefits you receive for having family fame. The next two options are the exact same. If you have value pack running when you collect sold items from the central market, check that box. And if you have a merchant ring, then check that one too. It'll show the resulting tax that is taken away when you sell items on the central market. Since a lot of cooking, alchemy, and processing is selling items to the market, tax does have a big impact on deciding what to do. Next is weight. The first one is just going to be the character weight of whatever character you're going to craft on. Generally, I use the weight without any cron meals or verdure drafts popped, since if they run out, sometimes my character becomes overweight and stops crafting early. The used weight is simply the in-game weight that is used naturally on your character before you put any crafting materials into your inventory. You can check this in-game to get your own number. Finally, the last one is what level feathery steps your fairy has. This is useful as feathery steps can add a lot of pseudo weight to your character. Next is gathering. This part is only if you want to do bonus calculations from self-gathering. If you are only interested in cooking, alchemy, or processing, you can skip this part. This is pretty simple, just input the gathering master you have per category while you gather. Feel free to include seafood crop meals if you pop those during gathering. The energy is just the max energy you have on the character you are gathering with. Check the combo blessing of Villa buff and Agris fever if you are running those while gathering. If you use a pet that gives additional gathering drop chance while gathering, input the tier that you have in the hedgehog tier. Keep in mind there are more pets than just Hedgehog that gives extra gathering drops now, but this is just a relic from the old days. Gather taxed milk is only if you cook only with milk that you personally gather through the minigame. I use a lot more milk than I gather myself, so I don't personally check this. The final one is just if you pop energy pots while gathering. The last two boxes are to calculate any additional drop buffs you have for special items like sharps and kafras. Gather spot data is more in-depth. Here you can input your own gathers per hour, also known as kills per hour. This is in case you gather faster or slower than the average. There's also gather ratio in case you use your own rotation like skipping boars and shira or going for extra scorpion kills. Finally, resource mapping is simply where you get your meats. If you only gather snake from shira, then just input that into the map. Finally, we'll move on to cooking. With cooking, there's another relic of the past. Speed cooking is cooking using silver embroidered clothes, and slow cooking is using any mastery clothes like Lagia, Geranoa, and Manos. Most cooking these days don't use silver embroidered anymore, so speed cooking is pretty much a relic of the past. However, if you still use silver embroidered, feel free to input your mastery while wearing silver embroidered clothes in the speed cooking mastery and the time per cook. Slow cooking is the same, just input the time it takes for you to cook and the mastery you have while wearing mastery clothes. Keep in mind, I personally add 0.26 seconds to my cook since with server lag, it generally adds that amount of time. In general, just try to make the time based on the average that you get. For example, if you cook 900 crafts and it takes 1800 seconds, aka 30 minutes, just input 2.0 seconds. The profit range is purely visual and it's just if you want low profit crafts to show a certain color. 
I don't personally care, so I haven't changed mine. Finally, byproduct usage is whatever you use your byproducts for. For cooking, it would be witch's delicacy, so if you turn them into milk, choose milk, and if you turn them into contribution points, choose that instead. Alchemy settings is the exact same thing, it just doesn't include slow or fast options. Simply put your mastery in, the time it takes, and whatever you use your byproducts for. In this case, it would be mysterious catalysts. Processing is also pretty easy, just input your mastery and success rate, also whether or not you use the pearl processing outfit. Training we likely won't go over, but if you do use BDOlytics for training, then you can just put it in right now. With all of our settings done, let's get into explaining the UI and how to use BDOlytics to calculate silver per hour. We're going to use cooking as an example, but you can follow the same steps whether it's for alchemy or processing. If you want to look at all the cooking recipes, you can click life skills and then cooking. You can sort it by whatever you want, but keep in mind some of the silver per hour numbers can be a bit misleading if you haven't set up the recipe yourself. The example we're going to use is date palm wine. You can search it up on the top right and then left click it. You can also use the very top right, type the item you want, and click cooking, alchemy, processing, or whatever you are doing. This way you can skip going into the cooking calculator. Looking at the cooking page, we can see on the top I have slow cooking checked as I don't use silver embroidered clothes anymore so I'll always have that checked. However, if you do use silver embroidered, you can have it unchecked and it will calculate your fast cooking numbers. The craft quantity is however much you're going to craft in a certain session. I personally go to the weight tab and see the maximum I can make based on my weight and then use that number. Since I only use advanced cooking utensils and have 2000 mastery, I can only make 9000 at a time, even though theoretically I can make more. If it said 5000, then I would just input 5000 at the top. If you are doing multiple hour sessions and just want to see what numbers you can get, you can input whatever quantity you want. On the right, you can see what the recipe is. For date palm wine, each craft takes 5 date palm, 2 essence of liqueur, 1 sugar, and 4 leveling agents. Since you can cook Essence of Liqueur, it has a plus sign you can click which expands the recipe for Essence of Liqueur out. If you are going to cook Essence of Liqueur, then use it to cook Date Palm Wine, then you can expand this to see how long it will take to make both items and the craft quantity is still going to be based on the Date Palm Wine that you make. With it automatically filling in the crafts of Essence of Liqueur that will be required to make the Date Palm Wines. If you use different items, you can swap them out with the swap feature. If you're going to process your own flour, you can expand that and it'll take into account your processing mastery. Uh, finally, on the right, we can see the inputs, which is the items you use to craft, and the outputs, which is the items you get when you craft. On my output side, it shows milk as I turn in which is delicacies to milk. This does change based on the recipe you put on the right. The custom price feature is if you don't agree with the automatic price that they put on, sometimes for maxed out items, I'll put my own custom price since it will autofill a lower number. The most interesting thing is the tax checkbox. This is if you already own an item or will gather that item for yourself. What the tax button does is it includes the price of the item post tax, since the alternative to using that item in this recipe is to sell it onto the market and take a tax loss. Generally, I'll click this on and off to see if it's worth making a recipe or if it's worth just selling the ingredients I already have onto the market. Finally, on the output side, we see the same custom price and the keep button. The keep button is if you aren't going to sell the item onto the market, instead use it to cook something else or to use yourself. This just makes the total return not include market tax, so it'll have a higher silver per hour. At the bottom, we see the crafting cost, crafting profit, and profit per hour and time. It's pretty self-explanatory and I mostly focus on the profit per hour and time so I can set my alarm. Crafting cost is important if you are buying all the mats yourself and are worried about if you have enough silver. And crafting profit is nice if you are calculating the silver profit in a non per hour basis. As you can see during the course of this video, the numbers change based on whether you mess with taxes, keeping, and the recipe. The extra tab on the top you can look at if you want extra information such as the weight tab we went over before, and analytics will include any gathering time that you input. So far this has all been pretty theoretical and not very practical. This website is basically an excel replacement so it has been a pretty dry explanation. 
This part is the most important part where I'll go over an example with my thought process on why I do certain things. We will be using Valencia meals as an example. Today, I want to make 9,000 crafts of Valencia meals and sell them onto the central market. I'm only going to be using my mastery clothes so every option of slow cook I'll check. On the top, I put 90,000 crafting quantity to see the resources that I will need along with the time and silver per hour that I will get. I'm not sure how the market's been, so I want to see if it's worth crafting the ingredients myself like couscous, teff sandwiches, and the others. Let's start with date palm wine on the bottom. I'll open it in a new tab to see the silver per hour. The craft quantity doesn't matter here as I'm only concerned with the silver per hour. I will buy all the ingredients so I don't have to check any of the tax and I won't expand essence of liqueur since I'm not crafting them. Since I'm going to craft these into Valencia meals, on the output side I will check keep. The silver per hour has gone up to 164 million an hour, but I personally don't think that's high enough to justify crafting them today. Going back to the Valencia mill page, I won't expand date palm wines since I will be buying them from the central market and not cooking them myself. I will now do the same for fig pies. I'm going to buy all the ingredients from the central market and I will keep it to craft into Valencia meals. Seeing the silver per hour be 479 million per hour, I'm more than willing to craft these. Going back to the Valencia meal page, I can now expand fig pies. I am going to be using rare procs to craft into Valencia meals, so I do have use rare procs checked. With fig pies expanded, we can see on the bottom that the silver per hour in time is now reflected. On the input side, I will need all of these ingredients to make fig pies required to get 90,000 Valencia meals. Moving on to King of Jungle Hamburgs, since lime meat is capped at 40,000, I'll input that instead of the base price on the website. I look at the insane silver per hour, but I realize I don't have any lime meat and can't buy it on the central market. I'm also unwilling to go gather lime meat today since I only want to craft Valencia meals. So I am more sad, but I end up not checking King of Jungle Hamburgs and I won't expand it on my Valencia meal page. Instead, I'll buy them on the central markets to craft. Now we'll look at Teff sandwiches. I look at the right and I want to craft my own Frika snake stew and grilled scorpions to then craft into Teff sandwiches. I will expand both of these. I can buy all the ingredients from the market except for scorpion meat, which I already have in my inventory. Since I already have them, I will check the tax on the input side, since it is cheaper as the alternative to making Teff sandwiches would be to sell them onto the market and I would lose tax. This just uses the post tax number as the cost of the ingredient. I know that I don't want to craft Teff bread and red sauce based on experience, so I will keep those minimized. I will also expand hot peppers since I don't have them and will have to buy special hot peppers on the market and trade them into regular peppers at Lagia Farm. Going back to the Valencia meals, I will now do the same thing by expanding Teff sandwiches and its sub recipes, along with checking the tax for scorpion meat. I am using all rare procs and slow cooking so those will always be checked. I then think to myself, wow, this is taking a lot of time, but I'm okay with it because I know the website will save my preferences in the future, so I'm okay with putting in the work now. Finally, I move on to couscous and do the same thing by expanding Freaka Snake Stew since I want to make them myself. The profit per hour seems good, so I'll add it into my Valencia meal sheet. Fully expanded, I look at the input side and see a lot of red marks. Those show that currently those ingredients aren't on the market. But since I can slowly order them over time, I'm not worried and I keep them there. I'm going to sell all of these meals onto the market so I don't check the keep button on the output side. On the bottom, I can see that in total to make all the sub meals and Valencia meals that I chose, it will take 12 hours to make 90,000 Valencia meals. Altogether, in terms of cooking time, it will be 500 mil an hour. If I was curious on gathering, I can look at the analytics and see what the silver per hour would be including gathering. Now that I know all the ingredients that I need, I will buy them all in the central market. After getting all the ingredients, I'll start with cooking fig pies. I go to fig pies, click weight, and see the maximum amount I can carry is 8400, so I input that onto the top. I see that this crafting session is 33 minutes, so I put that onto a timer and start cooking. 
Finally, I repeat this with all the crafts that I want to do, including Freaka Snake Stew into Couscous and then into Valencia Meals. If I want to see how much I need to create, I can always minimize the things and see that I need 90,000 Couscous to make 90,000 Valencia Meals. With all of that, I'm set to make 90,000 Valencia Meals. With all of that being said, Bediolytics is a great website where you can track your life skilling profits irregardless of how you want to do things. Some people may have a different workflow than mine, but they can always feel free to play around with the website to reflect what they are doing themselves. Feel free to play around with the numbers, just make sure that the data you get, aka the silver per hour, is meaningful enough to be useful for you. If you somehow get numbers to be 10,000 billion an hour but can't actually get that much then it's not really going to be useful. If you want to do it for alchemy or processing, it's the exact same method that I went on before, just use an alchemy or processing recipe instead. Anyways, this kinda is a brick of a video but I want it to be pretty all encompassing for a new player. Again, if you have any questions I'll answer anything in the comment section below. I also might make more of these videos in the future so look out for that. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys next time.